Hello everyone, greetings from placements key. I welcome you all to the lecture series on TCS and QT. I'll be covering the exact questions that were asked on 27th October 2020 and it is slot 2. Now I'll be covering questions based on logical ability. I've already uploaded questions based on quant from many slots. Okay, so please watch the videos if you have not watched them yet. All these are memory based questions, right? Let's look at the first question. Which letter will come in place of the question mark in the puzzle? Now, um, whenever we look at alphabets, it's always better to replace the alphabets with their corresponding position numbers so that it's easy to compare numbers rather than the alphabets. So let me replace them. You get 9, 3, 5, 8, 13, 20, and then you have a 5. For some reason, I'm also writing 5 as 31. Okay, because after a cycle gets over, again, you, you get it as, uh, you, you get E, right? Let's say after 26. Okay, you know Z is 26. After that, again, the cycle repeats. So, 27 will be A again. 28 will be B. 29 is C. 30 is D. 31 is E, isn't it? Therefore, I'm writing E also as 31. Or 26 plus the actual position number 5. Okay. Now, similarly, for some reason, I'm also writing 9 as 26 plus 9. 26 plus 9 is 35, right? Okay. Now, let's look at the pattern as such. Okay. If you carefully observe, you have plus 2 here. And then you have plus 3 here. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 plus 7 is 20. So, clearly, these are what? These are prime numbers, right? So after 7, what is the next prime number? It is supposed to be 11. Therefore, we have 31, which is equivalent of E. 31 is also 5, right? Just now I've explained. Therefore, you get 20 plus 11 is 31. And what is the next prime number after 11? It is 13. So add what? Add 13 to it. Add 13 to 31. What do we get? Or, or add 13 to 5. Okay, so what do we get? 13 plus 5 is 18. We know that uh, R is, R's position number is 18 in alphabetical order. Okay, so therefore you are supposed to get R, which is 18. Okay, further, uh, we know we have added how much? We have added 13 to this. Okay, now what is the next prime number after 13? It is supposed to be 17. So if we add 17 to it, okay, 18 plus 17, you get 35, which is also 9, which is I. Is it clear? So basically, it's just nothing but the prime numbers. Okay, the difference of the the alternate numbers or, or the adjacent numbers is always prime, starting with 2. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13 and 17. Therefore, R, option C is the right answer. Okay, select the correct option based on the following criteria. You know, it is data sufficiency based questions. Whenever we have data sufficiency based questions, what do we do? First check from the first statement alone, then from the second statement alone. And if you're not if you're not able to answer the question even then, you will combine both the statements, right? Let's look at the first statement, okay? But before that, what is the question? Who is younger among W, X and Z? So among W, X and Z, we are supposed to find who is the youngest. So let's look at the first statement. X is older than Y. So X is older than Y. Z is younger than W. Z is younger than W. That is W is greater than Z. Right? If you look at it, we only know that X is greater than Y and W is greater than Z. Right? But we are not sure of who exactly is the youngest among W, X and Z. Right? Isn't it? Because there is no relation between X and Z. Right? Therefore, you only know X is greater than Y. You only know W is greater than Z, right? Therefore, there is no common term to compare all the three terms, all the four terms in this case, right? Therefore, statement one alone is insufficient to answer who is the youngest among these three. So this is incorrect. Let's look at the second statement alone. What do we have? W is older than Z, okay? Older than Z. X is younger than Z. X is younger than Z, that means Z is greater than or Z, Z is older than X. Now, problem is solved, right? You have a, a, an exact relation that you are looking for. We have W greater than Z greater than X. We know that 
clearly x is the youngest of all right so that is what we are supposed to find who is the youngest among w x and z so statement 2 alone is sufficient to answer the question therefore statement 2 alone which is what b right if data in statement 2 alone is sufficient therefore you get option c which has b as the right answer okay again we have a data sufficiency based question uh, this is on directions what is our uh, approach always first read the question then try statement one alone then try statement two alone if you're not successful even then try to combine both the statements okay what is the distance between point t and point u okay you are supposed to find the distance between t and u let's look at the statements statement one alone point s is towards the north of point t let's say point t is here so point s is to the north of point t okay because we have this direction right north south east and west okay now point u is 20 meters east of point s 20 meters to the east of point s we have point u now can we really answer what is the distance between t and u not really why because we don't have this distance okay therefore statement one alone is insufficient to answer uh, the to answer whether the i mean to find the distance between point t and point u therefore one is incorrect let's look at the second statement alone what is that point v is towards southwest of point s let me take s here okay southwest so this is south and this is west therefore southwest is this direction southwest so point v is to the southwest of point s so this is where v is then what do we have point s is 10 meters from point t e. now see point s is 10 meters from point b it's very vague because it can be anywhere t can be here or t can be here t can be here t can be here 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 anywhere just that the distance is 10 so you can't really ascertain as to where exactly is t okay also you don't have any mention about u in first place because you are supposed to find the distance between t and u therefore definitely statement 2 alone is also insufficient okay now what do we do if we are not able to answer the question using both the statements individually then you'll combine the statements so what is it you have an s here you have t here we know that in the second statement it's given that the distance between s and t is 10 so you've got this now we have additional information where v is to the southwest of yes that is not really required to answer the question therefore now that you know 10 and this is 20 so the distance between t and u is what you can apply pythagoras theorem and find the distance so on combining both the statements you are able to answer the question therefore what is it the data in both statements one and two together it's necessary to answer the question which is d which is option a okay uh, let's look at uh, the following let's look at this question okay so amisha wanted to throw a reception party fine so the expenditure percentage distribution is given as such so 30 percent on catering 25 percent on uh, decoration 20 percent on music system 15 percent on photography and videography together 10 percent on invitations you know the total invitation sorry the total expenditure was you know 10 lakh 59 yes uh, you know reception parties are so uh, expensive right so therefore they are costing what in all 10 lakh 59 600 fine now we are supposed to find how much uh, she spent on photography and videography and invitations together so we know 15 percent is photography and videography 10 percent is on invitations so totally it is 25 percent of the total expenditure which is 10 lakh 59 to solve for this value it is one fourth of this value see clearly i'm trying to go with answer options okay i'm not really trying to find the exact value as such you know if it were 10 lakhs itself okay if the total expenditure were 10 lakhs itself then you should have then she should have spent 25 percent of it which is 2 lakh 50 thousand on uh, photo video and invitations if you look at answer options they're they're already you know like less than 2 lakh 50 thousand the only answer option which is greater than 50,000 is 2 lakh 50,000 is this you got it right if it were 10 lakhs itself you have 2 lakh 50,000 
but it is 10 lakh 59,600. So you again get like what around 15,000. Is that clear? Therefore, option A is the right answer. Or you can always go with the conventional method. One fourth of this, you know, 10 lakh one fourth is 2 lakh 50,000 and 59,600, which is close to 60,000. So one fourth of it is 15,000. So you get a value which is closer to 2 lakh 65,000, which is option A. The same set. Uh, we should be lucky enough how much money was spent on decoration in the party you know decoration uh, accounts to how much it is 25 percent i think just now we have made the same calculation 25 percent of 10 lakh 59 600 which came down to around 2 lakh 65 000. so again option a is the right answer right choose a pair which is similar to the following let me first replace each of the alphabets with their corresponding position numbers right so this is what we get after replacing all the alphabets with their corresponding position numbers, right? Uh, now the question is, should we do it for all the uh, given options? Not really, right? If you get A as option and that is satisfied and that is very similar to the pair, the, uh, you know, the pattern that's followed in the, in the pair, in the question pair, then you can straightly say that, you know, A is the answer, right? So only if you're unlucky enough, then you would have to uh, write down for all the given sets, right? Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. So I've already done this. Now let's see um, what is the pattern. So what is happening here? You have a 13 and 15 here. So you have 13 plus 2 is 15. And then you have 4 which and then you have a 2 here. Therefore it is 4 minus 2. So we are doing plus 2 and then minus 2 and 24 plus 2 is 26. That's what we're having, right? Similarly, 6 minus 2 is 4. So what is effectively happening? Uh, the position numbers are increased by 2 for odd positions whereas decrease by 2 for even positions plus 2 minus 2 plus 2 minus 2 let's check this you have a 9 you have 11 so it is what plus 2 that is fine and then you have a 12 and then 14 again you have plus 2 which is definitely so i'm not even checking any further because you know that the ones in the odd sorry even positions should be decreased by 2 right but here the even position even position uh, alphabets are also like increased by two their position numbers are right therefore i'm straight away saying that you know this is incorrect so i need not even have to write for the rest right let's look at the next one 19 you have 19 here and 21 here so 19 plus 2 so far so good you have a 7 and you have a 5 you have minus 2 so happy enough you have a 6 you have an 8 again it is plus 2 yeah so odd plus 2 you're happy and then finally you have 14 and 12 so it is minus 2 so that's exactly what we are looking forward to, right? So plus two minus two plus two minus two. Therefore, clearly option B is the right answer, right? So I need not even have to write the corresponding position numbers and all of that later, right? Because it has been satisfied in the second option itself, right? So we should be lucky enough in this case, right? Okay, so option B is the right answer. Okay, for a job selection in a company, the following conditions needs to be fulfilled. The first one is what uh, with respect to age. The second one is with respect to the marks scored in the interview. Third one is with respect to the degree. Fourth one, whether she has he or she has a relevant work or not. And if the in case a candidate who fulfills all conditions except four, that is if the candidate fulfills one, two, and three but not four, then you have an additional check as such here, right? Okay, so we have basically have got five conditions. Okay, four uh, must fulfill conditions and then one is an exceptional condition if four doesn't get fulfilled. Let's look at the case at hand. Anshika, she was born on 7th March 1997. We know that the first one is with respect to age. She should be at least 23 years uh, and at most 28 years on 1st December 2020. So her date of birth is 1997. So what happens? by March 7th uh, 2020 her age would have been how much you know uh, 23 years would have been elapsed right she would have already been 23 years by 7th March 2020 so therefore this satisfying the first condition okay now next uh, we have something with respect to the written test and marks in the interview right so we have she has scored 70 percent in the written test and 55 percent in the interview yeah so 70 percent in the written test yeah she has which is greater than the cutoff, which is 65%. And then she scored 55% marks in the interview, but the required marks is only 40%. So she is also fulfilling second, second condition, right? 
Her third one is she pursued graduation degree with minimum 60% marks. Yeah, she completed her graduation with 75% marks. Again, it's way above the required level. And then finally, she should have had at least one year, one year work ex. She has a work ex of two years. So definitely, she is satisfying all the given conditions. Okay, the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. So basically, she should definitely be selected because she is satisfying all the given conditions. So what is it? The candidate is to be rejected. The candidate is to be referred to the manager. No, the candidate is to be selected. So option A is the right answer. Okay. Now the next one is the syllogisms uh, based question. Uh, you can solve syllogism based questions in a number of ways, but I'm just restricting myself to solving using the Venn diagrams method. All cats are lions. All cats are lions. Yeah, these are these are far, uh, you know, different from the reality, right? There is a far deviation from the reality, but still, uh, we'll have to assume that you know these are correct. That's what is told, right? Even if they they do not conform to the real world knowledge, please, uh, you know. Proceed further. That's what they are saying, right? Yeah. So all cats are lions. So the entire region representing cats is within lions. Okay. This is fine. Now some lions are tigers. Some lions are tigers. So there are different possibilities. So this can be one possibility. Some lions can be tigers. I'm also writing one more possibility, uh, just for your understanding. You know, cats and lions are there, right? Some lions are tigers. So the tigers can also intersect cats. That is also possible, right? The tigers need not have to intersect uh, cats, or the tigers can also intersect with cats. I'm just writing two possible Venn diagrams uh, for better understanding. Okay. So we've written this as well, right? Now, if you look at this, um, the conclusion: some tigers are cats. Can I definitely say that some tigers are cats? Not really. In this case, yes, there is an intersection between tiger and cat. But in the first case, there is no intersection between tiger and cat at all, right? So when you're concluding something, it has to satisfy all possible Venn diagrams. But some tigers are cats is satisfying only one of the possible Venn diagrams in this case. Therefore, this is definitely incorrect. Okay. Now the next one is some lions are cats. Definitely some lions are cats. See when all cats are lions, definitely some lions are definitely cats. See look at this. In any possible Venn diagram, some lions are definitely cats. So the conclusion one is definitely correct. Therefore, what is the right answer? Two is incorrect, whereas one is correct. So if you look at it, two is incorrect. Sorry, one is incorrect, whereas two is correct, right? One is incorrect, whereas two is correct. Only conclusion two follows. Yeah, it should have been some typo error. So you can either choose option C or option D, right? Basically, only conclusion two follows. Which of the following element satisfies a Venn diagram? Fine. Let me first convert this uh, Venn diagram into statement so that it makes much more sense for us. Uh, let's let's assume you know you this is a this is b and this is c okay so a is within b all a's are within b so i'll say all a's are b's now if you look at b and c no b is c there is nothing common between b and c right so no b is r c's so this these are the statements for these venn diagrams okay so basically what is happening there should be something that is common between two uh, sets okay where all a's are b's and then there should not be anything common between two sets no b's are c's okay let's look at the uh, you know options okay so quadrilaterals and squares so definitely we can say all squares are quadrilaterals right all all squares are quadrilaterals which is of the form all a's are b's right all squares are quadrilaterals we know that quadrilaterals are not triangles right so therefore no a quadrilateral no quadrilaterals are triangles so this is what no quadrilaterals no b's are c's so it's satisfying right so all a's are b's no b's are c's so definitely what option a should be the right answer okay so basically what is happening there has to be something common between two sets and then there has to be one more set that doesn't share anything with the remaining two sets Okay, so if you look at this, you have color plate and fork, doctor, patient and nurse, transport, bus and cycle. They don't really satisfy the conditions that I've just now mentioned. Okay, so where do we have all A's or B's? All A's or B's. All plates have colors. All forks have colors. Okay, this makes sense. All plates have colors. All forks 
have colors mm, so yeah there is something you know which doesn't seem to be right not so much as we felt with a right now we should also say that no plate is a fork right so this really doesn't make much of sense as much sense as it made with option a therefore i don't really go with b as well doctor patient nurse so there has to be something very uh, uncommon between uh, two sets and one set separately right so see here all a's are b's so c there is nothing common between c and b there is nothing common between c and a so i'm not really getting any clear uh, picture as to what these individual sets are therefore i don't really go with either b or c or d but it makes much sense with the first statement all squares are quadrilaterals and no quadrilaterals are triangles so it's it's very clear right so therefore option a should be the right answer thank you guys let's meet in the next lecture